So here I am with this recliner that needs a new slip cover. So obviously recliners are way different than um, typical chairs because they have moving pieces. So I'm going to opt to put this into, I think four pieces. Like, so the back will be a piece the cushion piece and the two arms will be their own piece in terms of um, fabric that can be removed. So again, I am predominantly a self-taught um, slipcover artist, so to speak. I took a couple of video classes way back when I started, but I started because my husband told someone that I could do it. And I said, I have no idea what I'm doing. Why would you ever tell them that I could do it but because he told them I could I started and ever since then then I have had this steady stream of slipcover clients so I like to start by just tracing out the back Sewing is the connection between the clothing and textiles in our lives. If you have a sewing machine that you lack the confidence to use, this channel is for you. I'm Naomi Feta, and I'm here to help you learn to alter, repair, and decorate the textiles that surround you. Let's think outside the box together to find solutions for those items that aren't working. And often I'll do that with some Taylor Shock. This is the fabric that the client has chosen for this piece um so i actually just go and pin it right to the chair like that and i leave myself some extra seam allowance because i have definitely done my time where i messed up and didn't leave enough seam allowance so i tried to give ample amount I'm trying to make it so that it's going with a straight line here, right here at the base of where the chair moves. It's a little bit wider than the top. So I do wanna make sure that I have it pretty squared off. There we go. I'm just going to keep pinning. And as you can see too, my fabric is always inside out when I'm doing these covers because you're working from the back side. Now I'm just looking at my just trying to re square that. And for these, I don't plan to put a skirt on this one. If I'm doing like a wing chair, often I'll add a skirt, but for this one, I am not adding a skirt. There we go. So I'm just gonna grab a pair of scissors and leaving enough allowance i'm going to cut across here
So I'm going to come up here. For this part of the video, I am speeding up the timing just a little bit. And here I have made a facing for this arm. I'm going to go ahead and pin it in place. So I really like the pin fit method where you're pinning it exactly where you want it. The pins to me are acting almost as a stitching guide so that I know that I'm going to be pinning right in that or sewing right in that line of pins. So it's a lot of tucking, trimming fabric, lining everything up. And of course, as you can see in the background, whenever I'm in a project, I always have fabric kind of going everywhere. Still working on my organization of my shelves that you'll also see in the background of some of the other clips for this video um, i've been in my shop now for about a month and i'm loving it but definitely still working on the organization though as my husband would say when i used to work in a deli that i always work better with everything out so if i'm working and in the middle of the project it is going to look like a mini tornado went through and that's just okay so I'm just continuing to pin all the way along here, making sure that I have a good amount to tuck um, going around that corner. I did have to make just a couple of tiny little darts up here. Um, not very many. I think this one only had two. Uh, so depending on the shape of your arm will depend on whether you need to have um, some of those folds, gather starts, whatever you would like to call them. In fact, you're allowed to pretty much use any of those methods to bring your fabric together for the arm. And then on the back right here, I'm checking to make sure that it is going to wrap around the back in the spot that I need it to. And then I just want to trim away quite a bit of that excess down to approximately how much I would want for the seam allowance. I tend to think somewhere is around half an inch, three quarters of an inch. Maybe I'd rather go on the side of um, more rather than less because you can always trim it away. And I will afterwards, after I've stitched the seam, go ahead and take it and put it on the serger because I don't want any raw edges. I do like to make slip covers so that they are machine washable and dryable so that um, if you do have raw edges, that means that when you're you know, machine washing and drying, they're going to uh, ravel and we don't want that. So definitely be cognizant of that as you're stitching, figuring out, well, what am I going to do to, um, you know, make them last the longest as they get worn. And of course, some people don't really wash your slip covers very much, but uh, definitely have that in your, your radar for whether you're going to need to wash and dry. So this is just the opposite arm continuing to pin away, pin and trim, and that's what I'm doing until this is all finished. Now I am finished with this slip cover, and I just wanted to explain how I actually did it. So there's a piece of um, Velcro here, and this is attached to the whole seat up and around. And then here, this piece, so here's the Velcro that's attaching to this, there's actually a separating zipper right in this corner. 
and this is the arm. So I'm going to spin it around rather than move the video. And this arm is going to come off here. Now I'm going to go ahead and lift this up. Here I attached these two arms together with snaps and elastic like that. Again, this is my own creative way of making a slip cover for a recliner. These pieces just come off. There's some elastic in them. So that's how that foot cover comes off. This piece here is all Velcro. So it just wraps around with some Velcro. But then the two arms are going to come off separately. Okay, I'll take it off so you can see. And I also wanted to note so over here that I should have noted before I took it off is how perfectly I had to make a hole for this to slip through. So in order to do that, um, basically I traced the circle and made a facing for it. So that's how I was able to make that. And you'll see the back corner here of where I had the separating zipper. And this is the seat. So it's just coming up and over the top. And then this piece is totally separate as well. So it just comes off. There's a little elastic in underneath the front and it comes back in like that. So now I'm just gonna tuck it all back into place. But with any recliner, um, just be creative. I mean, problem solve. Some of them are a little bit different. Like I had one recliner at one point that it was like this piece here was almost totally separate. I'm not sure how it worked. I think the mechanism was mostly in here. Whereas in this chair, there's some moving mechanisms here. So um, there wasn't a lot of space to tuck fabric in that area. So just continue to like problem solve with the piece that you have. Um, think about how it's going to move. And, but typically you are going to have to take the seat, the back and the two arms as separate pieces so that they can move independently when it goes up and down if you want it to like actually keep its shape, like, I mean, the slip cover to keep its shape while the chair is moving. We just tuck everything back in. So there's like little corners for here. And Hold this back down here. I could have made these a little bit tighter. I found, um, and I could actually just go back in and do that. Because it's just a piece of elastic. So just shortening that elastic over on that side will make it tighter. So just kind of smoothing it out because you do have extra fabric that's going in these tucks. And so as you know, you use the chair, you might have to move it around now and then. But um, for the most part, it's going to stay where you want it. I'm coming around over here. So 
so I was noticing that I didn't tuck enough up this way so it was that um, sagging just a little bit so you can just go back in and like any slip cover it's a process and then I'm ready to close it up so you can see as it moves for the most part it's pretty tight and then it comes up leans back and there you go thank you for watching you can shop tutorials and classes on my website naomifeda.net be sure to like and subscribe and as always may god sow his love into your heart today